So while I'm uh, still looking at the data, let's take a look at the methodology, methodology revisions I'm going to make uh, for future research, including doing another round of the wheatgrass sowing rates. Um, and uh, this will be something I keep in mind for other stuff as well. So uh, first one is I'm going to shift back to the regular shallow trays. Now the reason I wanted to do stuff in the cell packs before is because the cell packs give you an easily delineated area between each trial. Um, the challenge with that is that uh, there's two actually. One is that uh, the roots had a lot more rooting depth to go down, which they won't have in a shallow tray. And if this is how I'm doing my production, uh, as, as your seeding density goes up, your rooting space is going to become much more restrictive. Without that restriction in the trial, it doesn't properly represent the, um, the actual production. So I had thought about that a bit, but didn't really realize the consequence until I saw how much growth I had and how much root growth we got with that. The other thing is, <clears throat> in a growing system, the roots are going to be able to go down and they're going to be able to go in all direction. And, and in the cell pack, or at least uh, inwards. In the cell pack they can't do that. They're surrounded on all sides. So uh, the shallow trays and without the cell packs is going to make a big difference. So that's sort of two. One is going to a shallow tray, two is reducing the cell packs. So what I've done here is I've taken one of my shallow trays and I've just, uh, uh, what I did is I took the cell packs as sort of a mold and pressed them down to, to lay out where everything will go. And then I just put a few little pieces of plastic in there to, to mark where each uh, section will be. So what will happen here is this will allow the roots, each thing to be segregated, but the roots will be able to grow into each other's plots. Now, one thing that will happen there, for example, if there's something really dense here and something really not dense here, obviously uh, they're going to, this dense seeding might affect this one here. But I still think that reflects real conditions a little better than the cell pack. So I'm going to con continue with that. Uh, excuse me. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is, um, with the wheatgrass, I am going to place it under the lights without a heating pad. Before, I just put it into the regular light. And really, what I was, the reason I did that is because um, I didn't have enough space to do both the sunflower and the wheatgrass trials, two reps of each, under the lights. So I did the sunflower here, the wheatgrass in the window. And in a way, that worked, but I, I made the mistake of putting the wheatgrass outside one day and it actually scorched some of the blades of grass and, and that affected things as well. Once again, everything, every wheatgrass cell was exposed to that same treatment, but it still doesn't represent the actual production that will be taking place. So basically the wheatgrass will go here without heating pads under the lights as would regularly happen within the system. So the fourth thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a, a, a smaller range of sowing rates for this one. So last time I did a range of 12 different sowing rates within one tray, which is, which is quite a lot. And I think you, you can get a sense that if my sowing rate is too, too low, of course I'm not going to get enough yield to, to make sense. At a certain point that becomes obvious. Uh, and it, on the other end it's the same thing, if you have way too much seed, imagine having a bunch of seed mounted up like that. Clearly that's not a good use of seed and it's going to affect growth. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do two reps within one tray. So this will be one rep, this will be another, and I'll do six of each. And my strategy is to do one of these will be my known sowing rate, two will be below my current sowing rate, and three will be above. And so I think I'm doing this because the tendency is, is to think more seed equals more product, and that's only true to a point. And so what we're going to do is reduce that range, uh, uh, and we'll keep the same distance. I think 10% increases and decreases worked well, but we're going to um, just do six. Well, we'll have one rep here, one rep here, which means I could do a sunflower here and a wheatgrass here in the same system and, and get much better results. Uh, the other reason to do that is I, I don't really have the capacity, as I just talked about, to do multiple trials. And so to do four full trays at one time is just beyond what I can do. So reducing the, the trial size um, makes it more manageable. Now, in a way, I'm losing out because I don't have as much of a, a, as wide a range of data. But a, a bigger range of data is, isn't always useful. Uh, it might just be too much numbers to work with. And uh, if I don't have the time to, to get to that data to process it, it doesn't matter how good the data is if I don't have the capacity to work with it. So scaling back a little bit is, is going to help that. 
So the reason I'm going through all this stuff is because it's really important for you to think about this stuff and to understand like it's a process of getting good at something, whether it's growing microgreens or doing experiments or, or kicking a soccer ball. And so what I'm trying to do is share this stuff in real time. And obviously we can work a lot of stuff out through our experience. So we eliminate certain problems. Uh, but even in doing that, there were definite oversights in, in what I did with trials. So now I'm feeling I like this method. This is like I can look at this and go, oh, the cell packs, these cells aren't almost aren't exactly the same size. But I don't think stuff like that matters as much because you're so, your seeding distribution isn't always going to be perfectly even. And so what I'm going to do is just be very, very careful. I'm going to be very particular about how I do my sowing. Uh, I'll be very careful about how I place the seed on there. And then I haven't decided yet, but I may, once everything is in, I may remove these barriers. And that's the one I put the tray on top. I've got really good contact with seed and soil and these aren't getting in the way or sort of shifting. Once the seed is in place, uh, these, the, taking these out should be no problem because there'll be some natural gaps there. And what I might do once I lift the, lift the covering tray back up after sowing or after germination is slide these back in just so those, differ, those differences are there. So I'm really trying to think about all the specifics that would affect the, the, met, the, the methodology and our results. So as I said, uh, I'm going to, I'm continuing to work with the data. I've been very busy, so I haven't had a chance to really look at that yet. I'll make some graphs and then do a follow-up video on the results and discuss those. Um, and then I'm gonna get, I'm gonna do another round of the sowing rates. And I'm not gonna go through all the videos again. I'm just gonna do the experiment. Uh, I might do a few odd videos showing some stuff that I'm noticing is different and, and how the methodology is changing. Cause I may do this experiment again and make a few more tweaks and then Basically, after doing the experiment three times, we've got a really well-established methodology because it's been tested and revised. That is something you can follow more specifically uh, if you don't want to work things out yourself. Um, so yeah, I'm excited about doing the wheatgrass one again because I'm, I'm juicing a lot of wheatgrass these days. So uh, it's, it's one to play with. And uh, I will move back on and do some more sunflower. Uh, and I'm going to make some revisions to the evaluation at harvest time as well with the, I was talking about, I was taking a photo from above, and then there's software to sort of measure the amount of area of coverage. And I'm gonna make some revisions on that to make that hopefully a little more consistent and a little more standardized as well. So uh, these I'm gonna sow later today. We are May 19th today, so I'll do a similar thing. I like to start stuff on Mondays. It makes a lot of sense. It really helps uh, keep things organized for me. And I'll do some updates on that as it happens. Uh, and then I'll do some data crunching and update you on that as well. So that's a little, uh, just a little overview on methodology revisions, and then we'll try round two to see what we get in, in terms of results.